Hi, today we're going to be talking about organizing principles of design. Before we get into the specific organizing principles of design, we want to think about a couple of different things. So the first thing we want to think about is uh, intent. Okay, so the intent of a work. So what is the central idea or problem with which the artist is working? Um, it's really important to think about that when, before you start a piece of artwork. And the second thing is unity, the coordination of all the parts of the work to express their intent. Okay, so by pulling together all of these different parts, you begin to make a create a piece that is appears to be all one whole piece. So. When we get start to break down the rep, uh, organizing principles of design, we want to break it into seven different categories. Now, these are just the most common ones. OK, you could probably certainly add a lot of other things to this, but these are really used quite a lot by artists. So the first one is repetition. So what is repetition? Repetition is the use of a similar design feature again and again. Um, this device gives the mind of the viewer an obvious way to understand what the eyes is perceiving. So let's begin to talk about that. I always like to think about my time uh, working at Osco Drug. I was actually a stock stock boy uh, like 30 years ago. And one of the things that we used to do at the end of the evening was we used to take all the product on the shelves and pull it forward so it would be nice and uniform. So if we take a look at this, okay, do you see how everything's nice and rows and it's the same? Well, the same pr principles of repetition are here at play. People can look at this and see this is clean and organized and make sense. It's an organizing principles of design. But we take a look at this. Now, this may actually be a perfectly cleaned room. Could be perfectly dusted, perfectly vacuumed. But because it's organized in such a haphazard way and there's nothing that's really repeating, it appears like it's a lot of clutter and it's unclean. When we think about repetition, repetition is everywhere. Anywhere you look, you're gonna start noticing repetition. So these buildings in San Francisco are really identical, maybe except for the color of their exterior. And that's one of the reasons that you're drawn into this beautiful block. I believe this is in San Francisco. Um, we take a look at this floor pattern. You'll notice the repetition of black and white squares. Okay, it's an easy way uh, for the mind to grasp something, uh, to, to grasp this idea of repetition. We go on the highway, we may not realize it, but there's repetition everywhere from the lines on the road to the repeating uh, lights, lights, um, to the repeating signs in perfect order. So even these, even though they're a little different, we notice that they're repeated. We also notice that this is repeated and this is repeated. And this line with these things are repeated. Um, Donald Judd made a career out of using repetition. And so he created all of these sort of these sort of go on the wall. Now we're doing repeating in two different ways, right? So if we look at this, we're repeating uh, these. These are all separate pieces, right? That's being repeated. But what do we notice about it? It doesn't appear that it's multiple parts. It feels like it's one piece. So again, we're using the same design feature again and again, and we can read this as one unit. And here's some more of the work. OK, so again, these are sort of these wall hangings. Um, in this room, this I took this picture, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, but we see the repetition here. We see the repetition here. OK, and if you look in different parts of the room, there's repetition here. Although these are a little different, there's still a lot that seems very similar, right? We have the same color. They're all on the wall. 
They're all made up of these squiggly lines. Now, while Donald Judd's piece was repetition with a variety of different parts, remember that big wall piece that was blue? Well, this we're using repetition within a form, okay? So while that made up of different pieces, this is actually repetition within the form. And so we see these little circles underneath this rubber skin, and it's used again and again and again. All right, notice the repetition of this. To make this piece, um, the repetition of plastic bottle caps, okay, stacked up within a form, um, just a nice piece. You'll even see repetition used a lot in architecture. So if you ever get a chance to go down to uh, and see the Rookery, it's an interesting building. It's in downtown Chicago. I love it. I think it's a Daniel Burnham building on the outside, and Frank Lloyd Wright did the inside. Okay, uh, actually, he overdid uh, Daniel Burnham's work on the inside. But let's just take a look at this. We notice the repeating of each of these little things here, the repeating of this, right? You guys see that? Um, the re repetition of this, okay? Uh, the repetition of this. So there's just a lot of stuff that's being repeated. Um, this is the inside, and again, this was done by Frank Lloyd Wright, and if we take a close look, we'll also notice there's a lot of repetition. Notice the repetition of the circles, notice the repetition of the rectangles, again, more circles, um, these little dots here, uh, just a lot of repetition. These panels are all the same, okay? So really using organizing principles of design to tie everything together. Okay, the second thing we wanna talk about is variety. What is variety? Variety is a form of order in which the organizing principles must be discovered by the viewer. Parts that are seemingly different from each other nevertheless have something in common. So what does that mean? Parts that are seemingly different from each other nevertheless have something in common. Let's take a look at Tony Craig's piece. This, what do we notice? What are these seemingly different objects uh, that seem to all make sense? So let's just kind of break this down and why I put this in here. For one, we notice that each material is made out of wood, okay? Each piece is very different than the next, but they're all sort of tied in together. We also notice that it goes from, starts on the floor and then goes up right all the parts begin to go up and the parts seem to get more complicated as we move forward so these are simple rectangles okay uh squares and then we start actually building furniture and continue through another thing that's happening here is the shape look at how the shape ties everything in but again parts that are seemingly different from one another nevertheless have something in common uh, how about this? This is going to be very similar to your next assignment, so you may want to take a look at this, but these are all blue plastic bottles. They're all different, or most of them are different, but if we notice, there's a change in color as we go back. So we start with this light blue, even a little bit of green, and then we go darker blue to even maybe darker blue, okay? And again, even though everything's different, it it, it ties everything in very well and makes sense through the use of variety. Um, this side is different from this side, okay? And a good use of variety. I just throw this one in there because it's still one single piece, but in some ways it feels like variety to me. And why do I say that? Well, we have this figure and then we notice each figure gets smaller but it all makes sense, right? Um, but each figure is not the same figure. It's different parts that get smaller, but everything seems about the same, but it's really not. You see how it gets smaller? Even though we're repeating the hands over the eyes, the bodies continue to get smaller and smaller. So we almost in some ways have variety within a form. And here's uh, a full-scale invasion. This is actually uh, 
in New Orleans, this piece. So if you ever get a chance, I think it's at their Botanic Garden. It's kind of neat. Okay, let's talk about rhythm. Rhythm. What's rhythm? A visual tempo or beat. Elements of art that are repeated to produce a look and feel of movement. Okay, so you want to think about that. It kind of relates to songs in some way, that visual beat or movement. Again, remember, all of these terms can relate to artwork that was made yesterday or you know, a thousand years ago. So let's take a look at this piece. Okay, this is the, uh, the Charlotte of the Sun. It was done in 1670. It's at Versailles. Um, the reason I use this, we really get a sense of movement, right? It feel, even though this, this um, sculpture hasn't changed in 400 years or close to 400 years, it feels like it's moving, right? These horses are charging forward. This figure is coming forward. Look at that diagonal line there that's feeling like this is just a quick snapshot. And in a second later, all of these horses and figures are going to be someplace else, right? They're sort of charging. That gives that really great sense of movement. Now, we can take a look at these pieces, and they feel very representational, right? We know that they're people. We know that they're horses. But you can use uh, rhythm using non-representational pieces as well. So if we take a look at this piece, this feels like it's moving, right? Almost like how a fan rotates around. And when you're using these diagonal lines, you can really create that sense of movement. Again, non-representational, what is it? I don't know what this is, but we know that it's not a person, it's not a house, it's not a car. And those diagonal lines really give a good sense of movement. If we look at this piece, this piece feels like it's moving as well. Again, this was done a long time ago, and we get a sense that any minute now, this figure is going to be moving a little bit uh, around, almost in a dance. Okay, and there's the piece itself that is in the Netherlands. Um, just a really kind of a cool piece. All right, so let's talk about balance. This is the next area. Again, if I'm going too fast, uh, you can always go back and remember, I'm going to add a PowerPoint to this. Um, let's talk about balance in multiple different ways. It's elements of art that are arranged to create a feeling of stability in a work. A pleasing or harmonious arrangement of proportion of parts or areas in a design or composition. Portions of a composition can be described as taking on measurable weight or dominance and can be arranged in such a way that they appear either in or out of balance or to have one kind of balance or another. So let's begin to break that down. I like to break balance down into three major categories. So, and I would say, you know, do your best to understand this. But the first one is symmetrical balance, a formal placement of identical parts on each side of an imaginary vertical axis. Okay, and in the next few slides, I'm going to break this down even further. Um, and then the second way is asymmetrical balance, an area on either side of a central vertical axis that are not identical, but appear to have the same visual weight. And then the third way is radial balance, meaning anything of relating to or arranged like rays, okay? Radial or rotational balance is a type of balance based on circles with its design extending from or focused upon its center. Okay, so let's start to talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about symmetrical balance. What is symmetrical balance? Stefan Powell's big blown glass is perfect example of symmetrical balance. So what's that imaginary vertical axis? What exactly does that mean? Well, the easiest way to explain it is if I break this, make a line right in the middle here, are each side identical? Okay, so again, if I make a line right in the middle of this, is it identical? The answer is yes. So then it falls in symmetrical balance. Uh, take a look at this piece that's made up of pencils. If, again, if we draw that vertical line, this is identical. This side is identical to this side, this 
and this is identical. This half is identical to this half. Um, these figures sort of repeat, and it's identical. Again, if we draw a line here, we'll notice that each of these rows of figures are exactly the same. Houses, sometimes you'll see houses that have identical uh, uh, balance, right? Asymmetrical balance. So if we draw a line here, look at this. Everything's identical, even the chimneys. So if we break this in half, we have a half of a window on each side, and then two other windows. All right, let's talk about asymmetrical balance. Well, what does that mean, right? Well, let's take a look at this piece. So if I draw an imaginary vertical axis down the, or an imaginary line down the middle of this, uh, we'll notice that each side is not identical, right? So we have a horse head over here, and then we've got a horse hoofs over there. But if I ask you just visually which side looks heavier, um, the answer is they're about the same. So with that being said, this piece is asymmetrical balance. Each side is different, but it still feels like it has the same visual weight. This is Alexander Calder's piece, and if you ever get a chance to go down to downtown Chicago, you'll find this. So if I draw a line right here, which is sort of in the middle, we notice it's really heavy over here, but it's a lot more airy, but it goes up. So if we draw that line and I ask you which side has more visual weight, it's about the same, right? And this is a non-representational piece. It's not a good angle for it, but you can kind of get a sense for it. Uh, look at this piece. Again, if we draw that, same thing. Each side's not the same. Ears go back. Belly kind of goes back, right? Feel feels, this nose shoots out. So again, same visual weight on each side. All right, let's begin to talk about radial balance. What's radial balance? This is a great example of a piece that's radial balance, okay? We start at the center point, and then we've got these lines coming out, sort of like the rays of a sun, okay? Um, and then that gives it a radial balance. Sometimes it, we get a little bit of sense of movement from that. Now, you'll see this everywhere. So this is a great example. Again, here's the center part. These areas are coming out from that center point. Nice radial design. Here's your center. And again, things are coming from that. Kind of like a flower, right? Another good example of it. You guys are getting a picture. Even tire hubcaps, you know, nice, good radial design there. Ferris wheel. I took a picture. I think I took a picture of this. This is uh, Navy Pier. And, you know, again, we've got this center point with these lines coming out. And it's sometimes you can take a look. It doesn't always have to be art. Organizing principles, as I've shown you, is everywhere. So when you start to explore your world, you'll start to see there's a lot of repetition. There's a lot of all of symmetry, all these type asymmetry and radial balance. All right, the next area we wanna talk about is emphasis and economy. And what is emphasis and economy? Uh, emphasis is stressing of a particular area or characteristic rather than presenting a maze of identical, identical details of equal importance, okay? One method of achieving emphasis is making one area dominant. Okay, so we want to think about that. You're really stressing one particular area and making it more important. So if we take a look at this piece, um, where is the part that is being emphasized? This, right? This is more important than this bottom half. So if we break this down and say, hey, we've got some, you know, uh, uh, asymmetrical balance going on here, if we're if we're thinking about it this way. Um, this is is way important than this, right? This is almost a stand for this little boat with figures on top. And so the eyes are going to be drawn onto the area that I'm trying to emphasize. Okay, we take a look at this. Here's a non-representational piece. Again, this acts like a pedestal, even the color is a little more muted compared to this, okay, which is um, much more... Uh, in your face and more important. 
Okay, so let's talk about economy. What's economy? Visual economy is stripping away all non-essentials to reveal the essence of a visual idea. This type of art eliminates clutter, allowing the mind to focus on the beauty of seemingly simple forms. Minimal art is based on the idea that less is more. For minimal artwork to work, precisely enough information must be given in the right scale and proportions. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at Richard Serra's work, okay? It's not a lot of details. Um, if you notice, these are really massive. Here's a little person back over here. You get to walk through these. And he doesn't want you to, to be drawn into it being anything, but he, he wants you to sort of explore this area. But you notice the color is the same, not a lot of detail, but certainly something interesting for you to explore. Here's, here's Richard Sierra's work um, in Seattle. Uh, Again, very, very minimal, not a lot going on, but we notice the simple wavy gestures of these giant shapes. They're actually beautiful. Okay, here's another close up. Um, these are very simple. Okay, just a few lines, kind of minimal, really breaking it down to its uh, primal core, just a couple of different colors, some subtleties of the open line there. Um, very simple. Everything's kind of stripped away. Not a lot of detail, right? These are really simple, right? Here's just three rectangles that are sort of uh, tilted in one direction. Again, very simple. All right, let's talk about proportions. Now, proportions is really interesting. Proportions refer to the comparative, proper, or harmonious relationship of one part to another or to the whole with respect to size, quantity, or degree, a ratio. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, Leonardo da Vinci really, he loved, he studied proportions. And if we take a look at uh, the Virtua Man, um, this is a really well-known uh, drawing by Leonardo da Vinci. I got a chance to see this when I was in Venice um, it only comes out once every like three years or something. So um, if you ever get a chance to see it, it's really worthwhile. But if we take a look at this and we start to break it up into proportions, you can see how he's using boxes and shapes. So what are we talking about proportions? You don't need to write this down. You don't need to study this, but these are sort of the proportions that is in that last drawing I showed you. The palm is the width of four fingers, okay? So that's talking about proportions. A foot is the width of four palms, okay? E.g. 12 inches. A cube is the width of six palms. A pace is four cubits. A man's height is four cubits, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the arms are stretched out, and the legs are stretched out, and they're exactly the same. All right, so if we take a look at this, the height of this is one, and the distance here is one. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? Um, again, if this is 12 inches, this is 12 inches. All right, same proportion. Um, say everything's the same here, right? Okay. So for your next assignment, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about this. You're going to be using recycled uh, art using either variety or repetition. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that can be. First thing I'm going to do is just show you some professional artists. And so you can start to generate some ideas. So here's a non-representational piece. If we take a look at it, it's just like plastic pieces all knitted together um, to create this kind of cool shape. All right. I don't want anybody to do any loitering, but um, this is just milk jugs in a field. And using repetition of the milk jugs, you have an interesting installation of art. There's just bottle caps sort of uh, tied together. Um, there's a lot of great, um, when you begin to generate your ideas of how you want to create a artwork using repetition or variety with recycling, go to YouTube. Um, there's a lot of examples how to go about constructing things, okay? So you may have a great idea and just browse around there and you'll, you'll come up with some interesting things.
Um, this is at Navy Pier, and believe it or not, this is like a copy of uh, uh, Babylon's Gardens. Um, and if we take a closer look, it's just made up of like Lipton and Pepsi cans with cardboard. Um, really kind of interesting. Again, all recycling. That's just all recycling material. Now, um, even this piece, this is all toy soldiers and stuff glued together with hot glue and then spray painted. Okay, you can kind of see um, another kind of dopey picture of me. But uh, you can notice that um, it's all sort of glued together and you've got some, you know, you got these airplanes and you've, there's like little soldiers there as well. Um, interesting, just hanging it from the ceiling. Okay, just a bunch of recyclable materials. Here's a close-up of that. Some bottles sort of put together on a frame and then left in a resting position on uh, another installation piece on a lawn. How about this one? This is uh, just tires, okay? And then they're just kind of <clears throat> sewn together, put together. I'm not exactly sure how that's done, but it's kind of interesting. Here's some aluminum cans and things and just really just some interesting recyclable material um this is kind of fun this is a foam base and then it's uh like clothes hangers put on this giant gorilla really really neat again these are professional artists however i do want to show you examples of student work i always think it's a good idea to show uh you guys you know what other students have done in this class um so let's just take a look at this this is the first one i think this is really an awesome piece so what she did um was took a lot of buttons uh, first she made a frame and then put fishing line down and then she just simply did buttons and stacked them up one on top of the other until she eventually created a form that looked like a chair so there's a close-up of this. And yes, someone did do this in the class. Uh, quite an incredible piece. All right, and there's a kind of a pretty shot, right? All close up, how it's all put together. And again, you may have some skills that you might want to bring to the table with this. Here's just kind of a fun one. Uh, just a, a suit, interactive piece made with uh, recyclable plastic bottles. Here's another one with pencils. This person had just tons of pencils. They colored them and pushed it into pink installation foam. Again, if you need help with construction of anything, just email me or we can chat. I can give you a lot of great ideas about it. Um, I like this one too. This was an installation piece. Um, someone who made all these jellyfishes with found objects and filled the whole room. And so if we look at it, just this really, just fun stuff. So look around your house. You'd be surprised. You don't really want to go out and spend a lot of money. Um, just go out and get some, some stuff that you can find. Okay. Again, you know, just some simple stuff that you use at Christmas time, some pencils. I mean, just some, some sticks. Okay. With, I think some garbage bags cut up. Uh, pine cones. So went outside plastic Dixie cups. So you can kind of get an idea uh with straws so you can you can do a lot of different stuff here all right some more uh jellyfishes only a lot of this student work but i just think this one's kind of interesting okay. a couple of the students discussing it all right here's another piece I guess I've got a lot of these, right? Oh, here's another fun one. So uh, what he did was we casted concrete and then we put a plastic PVC pipe in the concrete. It's very actually quite easy to do. And then he took all of these um, containers like laundry detergent and coffee and then stacked them up like a totem pole and then just stacked these heads. And so you can see it, it's quite tall. Uh, and there's a close-up of it. Really just a fun assignment. So just have some fun with this. Here's somebody who understood how to make origami and work with some recyclable paper. 
All right, again, pencils with foam. Um, this is much more complicated, but it's, it's interesting to look at and to discuss. Um, this one used uh, coat hangers under a frame. This is the top of a, uh, a post. And then the coat hangers and then drape cut up sheets of plastic, uh, like plastic bags, and then just kind of wrapped it over. And there's kind of a close up of that. I like this one a lot. Um, yeah, not another great picture of me. Th this one's interesting because um, the student had a friend who worked at a hosiery uh, factory and they had a lot of defects for women's hosiery. And so what she did was she took uh, clothes hangers, made a frame, and then knitted all this stuff. She knew how to knit. So she created all these really, really cool uh, flower pieces. Okay, there's a close up. I mean, again, good attention to details. Again, this was done in this class and she just diligently worked on this project. Um, I think it just came out really fabulous. Here's some more work with a couple different hosiery, added some details, um, just really did an uh, incredible job. Um, here's, a, here's a simple one made up of uh, toilet paper rolls, a little bit of paint um, and some paper towels. And some tall, yeah. Oh, this one doesn't really show really well in the in the slide presentation, but it was really cool. He shut off the lights. He created this installation piece, and he was a bartender, and he got all these bottles and all these um, corks. And so he lit this up. He glued all this with two part epoxy. Glued all these um, bottles together and painted them and then put a light inside. And so the light shined up and these were glowing. So you come in the room in a dark room and this would be glowing. And then he had like these corks coming from the ceiling. It was, it was a really neat piece. Again, you can't really tell what that is. Um, this student, here's another piece. The student took cardboard boxes and covered them. And again, we did the same thing. We casted a block of concrete, put a PVC pipe through it, and then built the structure um, up uh, into different sections to give it some really nice height. Uh, this is interesting. This is using a little bit more variety, but um, he liked monsters uh, to drink mock monster drinks and uh, Red Bull. And so he wanted to create something. He didn't know how to rivet, but he learned again. He did it. He did it on his own and he created just this interesting piece. So I'm very open. Um, for you guys coming up with stuff. And yeah, it was really cool. Lit up and just was like a whole moving piece. I think his name is Dan, if I remember correctly, was the name of the student. Could be wrong. Um, here's, a, here's another really fantastic piece. So she wanted to do a dress out of uh, newspaper. And so that's what she was able to do. So we've got like the repetition of the folds and the newspaper within this form. Uh, and just really fantastic, beautiful uh, piece. Here's kind of a close up. She did that, uh, made that bar. So, really, really neat stuff. Um, this is just uh, newspaper and, and magazines rolled together and I think glued together. Uh, just a great, great piece. It doubles up as a bowl or a hat. Uh, it had a lot of multiple functions. Okay, so here's what you're going to do for your homework is in your sketchbook, or you're going to, I shouldn't say in your sketchbook, you're going to do a bunch of, of drawings. You're going to give me 10 sketches, ideas using recycling as a material um, and, and repetition as an element of design. You can use a variety. And it is sort of due for next class. So I will have in the uh, overview, I'll have all the information, but I want you to start thinking about ideas. Look around your house, find some interesting stuff. Probably do a, um, do a, a material demonstration to uh, give you an idea how to go about doing that. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. That is organizing principles of design. Um, oh, yeah. And before we get, this is probably how I want you to... Um, do it in your sketchbook okay so let's take a look at this you do a little drawing of your idea and then you just write down what you're going to be doing i will be using a asymmetrical design remember that's if i draw an imaginary vertical axis 
each side is different. You probably want to make an idea of your materials used. So in this particular case, I'm using cardboard, glue, foam, paint, uh, and I guess paint. And then construction. How are you going to go about constructing it? You can have a great idea, but if you don't know how to execute it, that's going to be a problem. But so what I wrote is I will cut out rectangular shaped boxes and stack them on top of one another. I will use foam to create depth. This will be a one-sided work. I will repeat the rectangle boxes. I will color each box with different colors and patterns. And I will put a hook on the back so it can hang on the wall. I like the idea of this piece hanging on the wall. This will be four feet long. So I'm using scale to really make this for exciting. So this is how I'm going to want you to turn in your sketches, OK? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I look forward to seeing your recycling uh, repetition or variety projects. All right, have a great day.